Hey, what's up? It's Burley from Rage and Pillage Podcast. You're watching Grandma and the Brisket, a Texas barbecue podcast. Oh, hell yeah. Hey, cheers, everybody. Hey, this is Grabbing the Brisket. Uh, hey, we appreciate you guys tuning in and uh, joining another one of our wonderful episodes that we got planned for you. Uh, I'm James, by the way, in case you hadn't uh, listened to the show. So we talk all things barbecue, all things not related to barbecue. I think we just pretty much talk, ter- talk everything. And so uh, James, we'll go around the horn. Tell everybody about uh, why you sound so terrible right now. Uh, so uh, I have uh, Corona, so it's, um, it's no big deal. Uh, I mean, it is a big deal, but it's no big deal. So I am self quarantined over here. I, I don't know if that audio quality is coming okay. You're good. If anything, you're okay. a little loud, but you're good. Do we need to turn me down a little bit, or are we awesome? I don't know how to do that. <laughs> or should I just talk a little softer? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. It's Let, definitely picking you up perfectly. You don't have to yell. I was just concerned right. this might be the last podcast we have with James. So you know, you think you're gonna queue mm-hmm. over? Yeah. I mean, look at him. He's just every week. He's Sorry, guys. On. I got to, I got something going on, guys. I'm gonna have to to chime in. Sorry. <laughs> uh, episode 188. So, We're creeping up on 200, boys. Wow. Yeah. Who would have thought it? Right. Mm-hmm. Something that uh, that started in pro- this right here. This uh, this garage right here. We started episode number one uh, with an idea to talk barbecue with uh, people that are like minded as ourselves and. Uh, it's been an awesome journey, and I can't wait to see what 200 brings us, and can't wait to see what 400 brings us. Wow. Yeah. 400. That sounds crazy. I can't yeah. even think of that right now. <laughs> Matt's <laughs> like, I don't know if I had that in me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> uh, well, by that time, we're going to be pretty much as big as Barstool, so everything's just going to kind of run itself. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll each be have millionaires doing work for us and everything. Right, right. So. Correct. Yeah, Somebody I mean, that's the goal, guys. Right. <laughs> I mean, we're not just doing this for free beer and free barbecue seasoning, right? No, I, we got into this to be all be millionaires. Yeah. That's why we're doing this podcast. I'm in it for free barbecue right. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> at least John's honest. <laughs> that's why all the free stuff we get always ends up at his place. Uh, yeah, this is true. <laughs> right. This is true. Hmm. So yeah, a uh, t- little touch of the Corona kind of sucks. It's uh, right here, right before the weekend. I had uh, plans to go out of town, so that's probably going to be put on hold. A little bit of a bummer, but I do get to sit around and drink a little beer and uh, shoot a little shit with you guys. Uh, what do we have on the docket today? Uh, well, I've got a whole bunch of stuff on our little intro thing here that I don't know what any of it means. So, um... oh, okay. well, one of them, one of them's queued up for Jan. Jan's uh, not here. He, I don't know. Yeah, Jan. He's not here. So, yeah. and some of this stuff, uh, I know this is almost kind of like a man. What is it? Beer fest where the guys like they're, they're sitting around drinking beer and they get totally obliterated and they go to the beer fest and then when they try to go back again, they can't remember the way back <laughs> because they're, they're they're not drunk. So, I usually write stuff down when I've been drinking because I know I won't remember stuff in the morning. And some of them are just off the wall, just weird. Like, I don't even know what I was thinking or saying. But one of them was Jan uh, planning on choking out his Uber and, or slash cab driver when he was in Vegas a couple of years ago. I, I don't remember. I was like, Jan, what's going on with that? But we'll, uh, we'll get with him next uh, week and talk about that. But I did see that. Uh, hey, one of my one of my favorite things right now on TikTok, and maybe he does this shit on Instagram or whatever. But Andrew Dice Clay, uh, I don't know if you're following him on TikTok, but he, he does this funny bit where he just walks up to random strangers and he's just like, "Hey, no, I I saw you looking at me. Uh, maybe uh, I don't do pictures. I'm not doing pictures. I take a lot of pictures all the time." So. And they just they look at him clueless, like, who the, who the hell are you? And he's like, it's it's okay. I, I know people uh, run run into famous people a lot. Uh, I just apologize. And he's the one approaching them. And then he, he does it at airports or just coffee shops. or He, he just finds random people. And he's like, hey, you know, 
yeah, you can have a picture if you want. And he just stares at them, and they're like, what? <laughs> a picture of what? It, yeah, and he, he, he has these, like, ridiculous, like, um, uh, probably, like, um, Elvis Presley, big giant glasses on, and uh, he's got a probably a beanie, and you can't really recognize him, but uh, he just goes around unrecognized. People don't know him, but he, hey, I don't know why I find it hilarious, but I do. We should try to start doing that. We talked about doing that. Yeah, yeah we should I think it was me, James, and Jan talked about it. We did. We're the podcast. Yeah, we're, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's coming soon. Just stay tuned. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel because. We did talk about maybe going into random Lowe's or Home Depot's and, and just rolling up to people and go, hey, uh, it's okay. I don't really do pictures, but if you want a picture, I will uh, I will do a picture with you and uh, just see what they say. We'll have somebody in the cut just videotaping it. And have somebody else come up and be like, holy shit, that's James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Whoa, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Then my anxiety will kick in. I'll be like, no, not happening. Yeah, exactly. Jan will do it. Jan would do it for sure. <laughs> you, start yeah, denying, yeah. you start denying that you are James. I, actually, I'm not James. I, I'm not in a podcast. What are we talking about? <laughs> right, right. Uh, I keep waiting for that one moment where somebody uh, just recognizes me. Like, hey, you're that guy from that podcast. But uh, I guess we just hadn't got there yet, guys. No. But hey, soon. Hey, in barbecue circles? It, it, we, we, are there. we are there in barbecue circles. Oh, okay. Uh, I did make another note. I saw that uh, the U.S. men's um, soccer team advanced to the knockout round. Not really up to terms with all this uh, soccer knowledge, but uh, I know it's a big deal. Yeah, I know you, you guys follow you it. To, yeah, I know you have to bend it, right? What? To bend it like Beckham or something? Oh, oh right? Jesus like, Christ! All, all uh, I know, all, kick it crooked. <laughs> all I know is the uh, all the amazing chants that the uh, U.S. fans have been having here. Have you heard hearing all the ones mm-hmm. they've been doing? Like they're. Uh, they're all there and they're all chanting, it's called soccer. Like, it's yeah. called soccer. <laughs> I, say, that's, that's I, don't, awesome. I don't care about soccer. I don't really watch anything, but I, that might get me. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. As, as if they hated America enough that and they're right, like, we're right. trying to change the terminology to soccer. <laughs> we really but, are the worst. <laughs> yeah. So Another little tidbit before we moved on. Uh, I was watching a TikTok, and I, we probably come across the same TikToks, but one of them was talking about the movie National Lampoon's Vacation, not not vacation, but Christmas Vacation, aka, uh, <laughs> and uh, the house um, next door to where the, uh, the the Griswold house was, where I guess Todd and Margo lived at. Mm-hmm. That was the same house that Roger Murtaugh lived in when he was in Lethal Weapon. Oh, How weird was that? The one yeah. with the toilet got I think blown they said up. even. Yeah. It, during for drug, for, during production or something like that, I get a guy I was talking about. There was like a toilet out in the front yard that they had to um, remove. <laughs> nice, uh, that's hilarious. Huh. I, I was going to ask you. I saw the little the little message. I didn't realize it was the one from Todd Margo. That's uh, that's something. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for Yeah. <laughs> Good Wealth contribution. of knowledge right there. Good contribution, John. Yeah. <laughs> Let me turn Matt's mic off. Hang on. <laughs> no. Okay, let, let's slide into the uh, barbecue news, guys. It's the Hot Out the Grill Barbecue News, brought to you by the MBBQA and uh, Barbecue News Magazine. I don't have a whole bunch. I just got one thing. The Champions Barbecue Alliance, uh, the, well, I guess it's a growing, um, what do you call it, sanctioning body going to say just texas but i think they're growing a little bit uh they just had their yearly i finished up their year their calendar year for whatever and uh they announced their winners for the year so i have a list i don't know if i should read them all but i'll read i guess i'll i'll go through there's not that many uh so for brisket the top team was god's country barbecue uh for pork the top team was bullhorn barbecue hey yeah we know that guy actually second in pork was uh lucky charms or lc barbecue uh philip breeden uh, ribs was first class barbecue. Mm-hmm. We know that guy, Robert Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then second in ribs actually was Bullhorn Barbecue again. Uh, first in chicken was Texas Sweet Heat Barbecue, followed by Natural Born Grillers and Bullhorn Barbecue again. And then the the overall team uh, was LC Barbecue, followed by Scooters okay. Barbecue and Bullhorn Barbecue. Wow. Wow! Nice. So, congratulations! Hey, congratulations! Congratulations to Robert Rocha and uh, Philip Breeden and uh, 
Robert Smith and all the other guys that got their names uh, called in that. That's a pretty prestigious honor there. So, yeah, hats off to you guys. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, when you think about it, like Scooters, he, was, uh, he wasn't on any of the top three for the other ones, but he must have been like right there in all of them because he got second overall. That's yeah. I don't know that guy over Scooters, but congrats. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, that's all I got. So I guess I got to do that number right there. I was waiting for it. There it is. Start talking that means else, carry so. on. Yeah. Right. Okay. Carry on. Yeah, that, that's going. So we're, we're continuing our brisket talk. We're going to talk a little bit about how to select briskets, a uh, few tips on how to select, maybe a few uh, tips on how not to select a brisket, because mm-hmm. I know there's a lot of information that floats around the internet where uh, it's like people, it's like their grandpa taught them how to do something, right. or, you know, they learned it from their dad or their uncle. Like if you like spin a quarter on top of the brisket, then you know it's like a a really tender brisket. I just made that up, but right. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, some people are out there like the that. Bend it, but, uh, bend it like a taco. <laughs> yeah. The bend it one. It's like, that's the one it's like, yeah, I guess it could, but no, I, I don't, I don't go by that rule. Uh, and I, I've had pretty good success in selecting briskets and it's all depends on really how much money you want to spend because really the, 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 selection when you go into the grocery store they're going to give you probably three options and it's going to be the the select the choice and the prime and and select is always going to be the cheapest and and, it, and these briskets are pretty expensive so a lot of people do gravitate towards those select briskets and and i'm not knocking them i mean but they are going to be a little bit dry they don't really don't have a lot of muscular fat going in between the uh the the muscle fibers so but that's where we'll start right now we'll talk a little bit about the uh, i guess the uh the grading system that the usda does when they they grade beef and i think john john do you have a slideshow for us do you have like a little uh I do, there I have you go. stuff i got this what do you think about that ah oh, that, so that's... those of you that are uh, only listening if you are watching us on youtube you'll be able to see this cool stuff it's a little a little pyramid that shows uh, all the grading for uh, USDA. Yeah, so you see right at the very top, USDA Prime. Uh, those are the ones we try to go at, but as you can see, it's only like 3% of the market of the, the briskets that are out there for you to get. So uh, USDA Choice is, is great if you can get it certified Angus beef. Um, the upper, I think they go the upper two-thirds choice, and then there's regular choice. Below that, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you really want to get into that run. But again, it, it all, it's all about what you're going to do. If you're going to make chalk beef out of this, then yeah, I mean, why not go for a little bit um, lesser quality and a little bit more easier on your pocketbook? Or if you just, if it's me just making it for my kids, I'm probably going to grab a selector of choice or something like. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Honest, I'm not buying a prime just for yeah. you know. And honestly, you right. can find some that look uh, that look pretty good and can come out pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like little little Luke is not going to be like just toss his plate up and just go. This is <laughs> straight up dry. There's not enough marbling in here, Dad. <laughs> right, garbage. where's the barbecue sauce? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's that's drawing the line. Get out of my house. <laughs> he puts ketchup right. on it. Yeah. Your bags are packed. Uh, but this chart chart is kind of funny to me because three percent of of the the cow that they they mark out there or they put out there they say roughly three percent is prime. But you always see a lot of primes with a lot of the choices and, and the, the selects at grocery store. And I know a lot of restaurants, they use prime all the time. So it's like, how can all these restaurants in this country, along with every HEB and every grocery store, have prime briskets? When there's only 3% of the cattle out there that's really designated as prime. That, that kind of threw me off a little bit. Honestly, I think part of that is that we're shopping at HEB. When I go over to Kroger, I don't ever see Prime. When I go to Walmart, I never see Prime. I don't even see Choice usually at Walmart. It's just select or stuff that's not even yeah. rated. So <laughs> I think it's because we're shopping at a really good store. We're not sponsored by HEB, but we should be because we love their shit. Yeah. And, and maybe I'm a little jaded too as well because we do live in Texas and we do have um, briskets in pretty much at any store that you stop at. You can get a brisket. Uh, I know we had our buddy Travis, he, he contacted me, I forget where he moved, whether it was like Mississippi or, or somewhere in that region. And he's like, man, can you give me a place where I can get a brisket at? Uh, because it's just non-existent where he, where he's at. And when he does find them, there's no good briskets. They're all just bottom the barrel select, or maybe just 
bottom choice. Yeah, so I, I think I, we, answered I, I, your, we answered your question there, James. Yeah, they're all in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Yep, correct. Yeah, and I guess if this, I guess USDA, they don't recognize like Wagyu or anything like that, right? But if they did, it would be right up at the tip top up there. Yeah, really like right. That. And there, there is a, a you don't you don't see on this list, but there is another rung below USDA select, and that's usually beef that probably gets like canned. Or right. it gets processed as like maybe dog food or something like that. Or maybe it's yeah. like the kind of steaks they sell at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> it's like meat glued together. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's a term for right. it. I can't remember what the hell it is, but uh hot dogs. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna eat it. Uh so we, we have another slide here. Go ahead and show the uh slideshow of the steaks so you can get a kind of an idea. Most uh I say most, uh, we learned a while back and I don't know if it was Jess Piles that taught us that Every every cow is graded off of its prime rib. It's a uh, it's ribeye. I'm sorry. Right. Uh, it's ribeye steak. So they'll they'll cut that ribeye open and and they'll, they'll look at the marbling and they have a chart that's probably like this right here where it gives you the 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 marbleization and it can tell you where they can grade this beef into. Right, and it's not even uh, just like so. any. It's like a certain between rib number seven and eight or some shit like that. It's always the same exact spot that they check on every cow. Which that is, is correct. Yeah. Cool. So obviously, more more muscle or more um, fat in between the the muscle fibers is going to produce a little bit more tender and a little bit more juicier piece of the meat. And this goes this holds true with like anything. I mean, whether you're you're getting steaks or you're getting pork or you're getting um, uh, whatever has it has a nice high marbling content in it. Uh, this is something you want to look for. But obviously, one of the things that that is is I guess negatively negatively impacted is is the the better marbling the more expensive it's going to be. Right. I will sure. say on this chart, the lowest I'll go is right there at that moderate level on choice, that upper end of choice. That's probably the lowest I'll go if I'm buying a steak. Right. If it's lower than that, I'm just not going to eat steak. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, if you go lower than that, I mean, are you just you just cubing it up? Maybe making chili out of it or something like that. I'm just buying ground beef at that point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and that, I, we're showing pictures of the ribeyes, but with with, uh, with brisket, it looks a little bit different. It looks almost more like because I guess it's a different cut with a different grain or whatever. It looks more like stripes. I don't know how to explain it. Like, how do you explain this for the listeners, man? Like, we always say fat striations, but it looks like little tiny fat stripes, right? Yeah, it's not speckled in like right, it is with right. these uh, ribeyes here. I don't know how to describe that better. But. I like uh, fat stripes. There yeah, look go. for a real fatty stripe. I'm saying, like, if you walk yeah. in, it's got a huge fat cap on it. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about, oh, this has not been trimmed at all. We're talking about, like, it's got to have the fat yeah. striation. It's like going with the grain of the exactly. meat. And there's little lines of fat kind of running right. through those grains. Right. You get the, the homers on the on the social media saying, oh, you cut off the fat. That's all flavor. No, that's not where the flavor The flavor is in the fat striations in the meat. That's what yeah. you're looking for. Yeah. So, so once you determine, okay, where, where your pocketbook will line you up with, uh, so say you just go with a choice brisket. Um, usually we do a lot of choice briskets as well um, because we don't want to pay $100 for a brisket. But so once you determine that, I guess the next, next step is how do you pick a brisket out? Like you, you got 30 of them or you got 10 of them in that case. Uh, you're going to go marbleization first. After that, where do you guys go? Uh, for me, I'm looking at uh, the thickness. I, I don't want one. like There's some that have been, I've seen that have been super marbled. Oh, this is nice. And then you pick it up. The flat's like, like this. Yeah, the flat yeah, gets down to about a quarter of an inch, and it's all fat. I'm like, once you trim this thing, there's not going to be anything left, and the part that is left is just going to burn because it's not going to be. You need one that's like pretty even, right, from one end of the flat to the other. The point's going to be a little bigger. It's just the way it works, but you want that flat to be pretty evenly you know, yeah. thick the yeah. thicker the better honestly yeah do you, do you guys do y'all like looking at the um the ones that are already pre-trimmed or do you them. just completely avoid those I, I look at them and if there's a good deal on them i'll sometimes get them but i just prefer to trim it myself i don't mind a trimmed one yeah if it's trimmed then i can see because if it's trimmed you can really tell like is this thing got you know is it going to be thick is it going to be the same all the way through sometimes when they're not trimmed it's harder to tell which which part of it's fat and which part of it's going to be actually meat but yeah That's for the true. most part i do the ones that are not trimmed but i'll look at the trimmed ones 
I just yeah. Show. One, one of the one of the drawbacks of getting a trim brisket is that you're pretty much just leaving it up to that butcher that uh, trimmed it. So and it may look pretty in that that crow back pack, but once you open it up, I mean, there could be a big gash right down the middle that's all hidden. So, but that goes with any brisket. So. I was going yeah. to say, yeah, I've but, had some that weren't trimmed that had like the, the slice right down the middle, and it seems like it's always in the same spot. You're like, what the hell happened there? Correct. Yeah, somebody wasn't paying attention or something at the uh, the old butcher school. Uh, mm. I will say that uh, if you decide to go the route of trimming it, uh, I I do that all the time. I very rarely do I get the briskets already kind of pre trimmed. Unless I'm just in a hurry that something I just want to throw on the grill and just be done with it, where I could just pull it out of the pack, throw some seasoning on it, uh, then I'll go that route. But uh, I like saving the trimmings. Uh, that way you can you can actually make burgers, you can make uh, sausage, you can make um, um, you can save the fat. You want to render it down and make beef tallow. There's a lot, a lot of other uses that you can do with that by adding a little bit extra work into uh, removing some of that fat. Uh, also. You're going to spend a little bit of money getting a pre-trimmed brisket. Uh, they they put their little um, their little mark up on it gotta, as well. Got to pay for That's that true. labor. That's true. Right. Although I've I've been thinking about that recently, and the opposite end of that is that when you pay for one that's not trimmed and there's a lot of fat on it, you're paying for all that shit you're going to trim up too. Yep. So it's kind of like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Well, I think like yeah, I mean the, I think the price per pound is slightly less expensive on an untrimmed, but yeah. Oh, it's, for sure. Yeah, it's probably pretty. Yeah, close. It definitely is. Yeah. Do you guys ever think that we'll get back down to just a normal, I don't know, we'll just say $2 a pound for brisket? Nah, it's, it's uh, been high for too long. Uh, for select, there. maybe. <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those deals where I, and I think it goes pretty much anything across the economic market. It's like once they elevate that price up so high, everybody gets accustomed to it, and then that becomes the norm. Right, yeah. that's the new normal. And then they'll, they'll jack it up from there, and they go, oh, man, okay, hey, Look at that. We dropped it back down to $3. <laughs> you guys are welcome. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's messed up. It's like one of those hats. I got to get, get one of those hats that says, like, make brisket $1.98 again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'll happen when gas goes back down to under a dollar. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we got a diagram here. Yeah, just in case anybody wanted to know where the brisket was uh, on, on the cow. It's, uh, that's a picture of where the brisket is. Right, right in the chesticle yep. region, region yeah. there. <laughs> Alex, you want to ex- explain to the listeners that can't see the uh, diagram what we're looking at here? I guess you'd look at you'd say bottom front corner. I don't know that one. Is that stage front or like stage what? left? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a <laughs> chesticle. It's Chest- a chesticle works. Yeah, it's a, yeah. towards the front of the cow. Yeah, it's basically the uh, the chest muscle, right? The pectoral. Well, help help me with this, James. What is the plate? I don't think I've ever seen a plate steak. Plate plate ribs. I've never I've never beef seen ribs. Them. Oh, that's what it's they called. called. Yeah, it's a plate. Well, they got the rib up there. Yeah, but... you know, it's yeah, it's the same. I've it's just never, I've never been to the grocery store and seen plate on anything. Then I don't know. like the dino ribs. A lot of times I, those are plate ribs. Mm. The, the, yeah, those are plate ribs. I probably don't see I don't that. that's, out, it, that's out of my price range. <laughs> I'm not seeing the dino ribs. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> So yeah, every every cow uh, has two briskets. So that's uh, I think we talked about previously in one of these past episodes where uh, Aaron Franklin was going through like a hundred and forty or hundred and fifty briskets a day, and he only buys the left. <laughs> right. <laughs> Remember that was a big deal. Like, oh, we got to buy left briskets instead of right briskets. Because yeah, they're right. saying all cows laid on one side. Yeah, right. It's Correct. False. Yeah. That's <laughs> so stupid. Right. Yeah, and I'll give a shout out to my buddy Dusty. He he owns uh, he owns cattle, and he, he knows a lot of places up there in the Grinch that have cattle as well. And uh, he drives around and looks and sees uh, which side of uh, the uh, which side they're laying on. And he's like, man, I mean, I, I, actually, I think he he first he was like, oh, they there's a lot leaning on its left side, and they they get up on their right, and then. I don't know, the next day it's different. So, yeah, there, there's no rhyme or reason. It, it goes back to it goes back to the whole folding a brisket. Uh, if you could fold it end to end, you know, it's going to be a tender brisket. You got a lot of people out there that will only buy left side briskets or right side briskets because they swear it's the, uh, that's the best. Yeah. yeah. 
So you roll into the uh, the brisket section and you find the one that, oh, it looks good or whatever, but it's got a lot of like juice in there, like that pink juice. People would say, oh, it's blood, but you know, it's just the myoglobin. It's like melted and there's like a lot of it in there. What does that mean? That means the brisket was probably previously frozen. And um, we, we, we learned this a long time ago and I keep bringing up Jess Piles, uh, but we learned when, when the meat freezes, it kind of contracts and then when, when it, uh, when it thaws out, it kind of expands, and all the ice crystals go in there as they're as they're as it's forming, and as I guess it defrosts, it just kind of I don't know if it's like tearing the meat or shredding the meat or does something to the meat that uh, really just doesn't make it its best quality. Does that make sense? I'm not saying it's going to be the super dry or if it's going to be super tough. It's just not the best quality. Is it a so texture you, thing you, more than anything else? It, it could be a texture thing. Um, and, and I think this lends itself on all proteins. Like if you see a bunch of liquid pooling, um, they, whether it's pork, uh, ribs, or beef brisket, um, good chance is it's, it might have been previously frozen. This is, uh, well, it's kind of related. I've never seen this on a brisket, but I just noticed this today at the store, and I've seen it before. Uh, not really brisket related again, but I wanted to ask you guys because I don't really know what it means. Uh, sometimes you see, like, the packs of, like, chicken, and it's, like, blown up looking. Like, mm -hmm. it's, like, you know, inflated looking. You know what I'm talking about? Right. What right. the hell does that? I never buy those because I'm like, oh, there's something wrong with that one. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Do you know, or, or we need to reach out to Jeff Browse and ask her? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I think there's probably bacteria that's already started to build up, and as you know, like bacteria when it starts when it starts feeding and produ reproducing and does all its little thing that it does, it does produce some type of gas, and it will swell up if it's in a bag or something like that. That's what I thought. So that, that, that could be a telltale sign, like that. It's not probably a really um, piece of meat that you probably want to go towards. You want to probably just like steer clear of that. <laughs> also, and I'm not saying all grocery stores or butcher shops or places do this but sometimes you get pre-seasoned meat sometimes it's due to the, maybe they're wanting to cover up a little discolorization oh 100 percent. that's something something it might not be bad bad but something like oh, okay we got to put a for sale like markdown stickers sell today type stuff on it uh so you throw a little red coloring on there a little little red seasoning to make it pop and uh you got to cook it that day the yeah. only place I'll buy pre-seasoned meat is a Mexican meat market. <laughs> I'm not getting anywhere anywhere yeah. else. Yeah. I used to you guys see, uh, but yeah. Do you guys see Jess Piles doing this, uh, whatever that dish is, it's almost like a beef tartare. Oh, I did see this. Yeah. Have, have you ever tried anything like that? Nope. It's, it's got, I guess it's like a ceviche type deal, but with beef. Yeah. It's like a beef dip or something she called it. It's like, like a, yeah. Oh, I did see that. It's I like ceviche, but with beef. <clears throat> She said it had to be super duper fresh, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm. I would try it, I guess, if I watched somebody make it that I trusted, like her. If she, if she had me over and I'm standing next to her island, whatever, and you know we're drinking Lone Stars and she's making this shit, I'll probably try it. No, I'm out. Yeah. But I don't know, man. Like that makes me nervous. Wait, so it's what, is it raw? Like what's going yep. on? It's literally no, it's raw. raw. Yeah. yeah. Did, did, I forget. Did she grind it or did she like, just cut it up? I, I think it may be just minced really well. Yeah. I don't know if she ground, ground it or if she minced it up really well. Yeah, yeah. But I know there was some seasoning, some oil, uh, uh, maybe an egg that went in there, a raw egg. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was just all mixed together, probably a little jalapeno, um, yeah. some cilantro. All that stuff's mixed together, and you just eat it as a cracker. You eat it on the cracker. You eat it that day. You don't let it sit. Um uh, what she she also said, that, which is, is something that yeah you learn something new every day, and we we never try to profess that we're the the high experts on anything in the culinary world or any anything in the barbecue world, uh, but we like having experts on. But she said, when specifically talking about beef, the bacteria is on the outside of the meat. Right. It's not on. It's not on the inside of the meat. So as long as you cook that outside of that meat. And that's why you see a lot of restaurants can get away with with cooking a medium rare steak where you, you only cook the the inside of it to 120 right. degrees blue. or somebody else gets it blue. As long as, you're, as long as you're searing and killing a bacteria on the outside and you have a high-grade quality beef, uh, you're good to go. But the problem is it's hard to tell where your beef comes from unless you've got a 
a single source, someone that's a, a, a single producer that you can go to, but we don't have that. I don't know anybody like that. We go to the grocery store and I can't tell if, you know, Billy Bob was scratching his ass uh, while he was, <laughs> while he was, while he was producing that shit. So it's like, I'm going to cook it. I'm going to cook it through and through. Oh, God damn well, it, to a certain Bob. extent. Just can't trust yeah. Billy Bob. Billy Bob, come on. Keep your no offense to Billy Bob. <laughs> right. That's funny. Uh, so, so okay, picking out a brisket. We, we're talking about meat striations. You want you want a good a thick flat. Uh, try to get one that you, doesn't look like it's been frozen before. Uh, aim for the higher grade if you can. Um, yeah. What else we got? Uh, I had another question here. I freaking forgot what it was already. Um, she gone. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what and we are. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, uh, we'll put it out to the listeners. If you guys have any questions or you have any concerns, please reach out to us. Please drop us an email or hit us up in the hotline. You can hit us at the hotline at 434-829-2299. And uh, let us know if you got any questions. Uh, also, yeah, there it is scrolling down at the bottom. Also, if you want to drop a barbecue win, a fail, you're going to have an opportunity to win a bottle of rub from Suckle Busters. 100%. Or if you're trying to pick out a brisket and you don't know if it's a good one, just uh, snap us a picture of it and tag us. We'll respond. <laughs> right. Let you know if you should pick it up or not. Right. Oh, the question I was going to ask real quick. Uh, yeah. Do you guys care at all about like size of brisket? Or are you basically just buying size based on um, like how many people you're trying to feed? Like For me, I really like trying to cook a brisket that's, he- that's bigger. For some reason, I just feel like it's more forgiving. Like If I can get one that's 18 pounds and up, I'll get that. Or you guys just yeah. don't give a shit about that. It's about how many people I'm serving. Okay. If it's just right. my family, then I'm just you know getting a small one pretty much. But I'll never yeah. get a brisket I don't want- that's just flat or something. I hate those like those ones are cut like that. Oh you yeah, know? yeah. Right. I don't want to go under ten pounds. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because they they, they say once you cook your brisket between trimming and cooking, you're going to lose probably about forty percent of that that meat yeah. uh, between water weight and it's just shrinking up so uh if i get an eight pound brisket that means it's, it's probably going to cook super quick and it's not going to have enough time for smoke and for some of that uh um, bark to form and it's going to reduce down to like basically like a little little four pound chuck roast or I'm whatever to say you're gonna have so, a steak at that point <laughs> right exactly so yeah 12 pounds they usually look about 12 to 15 pounds um, if you're feeding a lot more people, yeah, definitely go for the, the larger. There's always, there was always that train of thought for large briskets that you don't want to go for like too large of a briskets because they tend to come from large, uh, they older steers. Oh, I see. And so they could be a little bit tougher, but again, all these, uh, scientists out there, right. um, barbecue scientists or whatever you want to call them. I mean, they got their two cents. So. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Okay, okay. And you mentioned about trimming. So if you guys if you guys do get one that you need to trim a bunch off, save those trimmings. Put them in the freezer, freezer pack them, and maybe on a future episode we can talk about a little bit about uh, what to do with that. Yeah, love it. Uh, so you had uh, a, another list you wanted to go into? Yeah, well, I had a small, tiny list talking about um, – I know the holiday season's approaching um, pretty quickly, and everybody's out there trying to figure out what um, what to get their uh, what they want for Christmas, or what they want to get their significant other for Christmas. Uh, obviously, this is uh, list is more geared towards people in the cooking and barbecue world, but um, I'm sure everybody could use some of these products here. So, I had a few. I know John, you wrote down a big list too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll go over one that those drip easy. What is it called? The, the drip easy barbecue tubs. Mm-hmm. Those things are pretty, yeah, pretty badass. They're like the, uh, the giant collapsible tubs. And so you want to expand it open. You put something in there like your brisket or whatever season it up. And I think it collapses down like two rungs mm-hmm. or you can collapse it down all the way. Yeah. You can make it all the way to like a cutting board. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, the bottom is kind of a cutting board, right? Yeah, that's what it's designed. Yeah, you can trim your brisket or trim whatever it is, 
pop it up, season it. When you brine it in there, you can do that too. It's got a lid. Those things are pretty cool. Actually, I have one uh, in our barbecue closet that we have yet to pull out and play with. So, John's uh, always got the cool toys over there. Dibs, taking it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've been dying to get. We just had it sent to us, so I'm, I'm. Yeah, we're gonna definitely play with that because I've been seeing them everywhere. And yeah, this looks like a, a really cool gift. That I don't think it's gonna break the bank. So I don't care that you didn't yeah. pay for it. You can still wrap it up and give it to me for a Christmas present. I'll be happy. Okay. Right. Perfect. <laughs> uh, another one I had on the list. Um, well, uh, cookbooks, man. Uh, th- those are always great sources of information for everybody and a lot of uh, barbecue chefs and uh, pit masters have their own cookbook cookbook so if you got somebody out there that you're a fan of yeah go check out a cookbook i wrote down a couple i got uh, obviously um jess prowls with hardcore carnivore check out her book she's got a mm-hmm. ton of like killer rec- recipes in there a lot of them are uh, uh, i wouldn't say kind of tex-mex oriented but there's definitely a lot of um flavor spice going on in some of the recipes um meathead meathead has a cookbook out there as well mm-hmm. um aaron franklin he's got his own little cookbook out there so everybody has a little cookbook so that'd be a nice little stocking stuff for for somebody out there if they're trying to get something for somebody else yeah i have a, i have the meathead one and that one is i mean there are some recipes but that thing is almost like a damn textbook like if you really want to learn the science behind barbecue you really want to learn shit everything about barbecue it's in there yeah. like they've done a lot of testing and studies and like it's a damn textbook. It's really interesting if you like barbecue a lot. Yeah. So I, I would definitely recommend that one. And we've had a lot of our guests on here that have had that have cookbooks out, even mm-hmm. relatively new ones. Al Dente Diva. I heard it isn't barbecue, but a lot of really easy recipes. Matt Gork, Gork Boys Barbecue, he just put out a cookbook. There's a bunch of them that uh, we'll put we'll put a list. Our list we're talking about here, I'm gonna put a post up on our website that's gonna have we're just touching on a few things. We're gonna have an extensive list. So go check it out, and then once you're like, yeah, I like this, go ahead and send it to your wife or your husband or whoever it is going to be shopping for you, and they can uh, they can get the hookup. So I'm going to have links in there and everything for them to find it. It's going to be really cool. I'll go next. I had uh, two things I wanted to bring up. So one is the Thermo Pro Temp Spike. So that's a – it's a temp probe that's cordless. So it's just got the little – like it's got a dongle built on the outside of the – or at the end of the probe. So you can stick it in there, and then you just have it Bluetooth your phone or whatever. So I was thinking about this because my dad just got a new vertical pellet smoker, and he had a cord kind of going in through the little uh, glass door. So yeah. I was thinking, like, man, it's like get one of those things, and then you got a full seal. You don't have that cord in there, like, hanging out of it. So that's mm-hmm. what my dad's going to get for Christmas. And uh, the other thing, I think I brought way this to, up. Way to ruin that. And he won't watch this. <clears throat> and then uh, <laughs> your mom will. <laughs> And, and then uh, I think I brought this up. Your last mom's going to get it for him. No, 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 she's not. <laughs> but uh, I was thinking uh, last year I recommended the same thing. It's the heat resistant gloves. So I got those for my dad last year for Christmas, and he uses them all the freaking time. Now. Are you talking about the ones that are like fireproof? You can, actually, you can just reach into the fire, yeah, yeah. grab logs, turn them. You yeah. know, there's some, a bunch of brands. Some that of them you can. Too. Well, yeah, just make sure you get a good quality one. I had a fairly good quality one that John burnt up. I mean, it happens. When you're using them, they get burnt. Yep. Yeah. But it, they work. They work. I would rather while. burn the glove than burn my hand. It's true. Yeah. I would have rather John burn his hand up than burn my glove. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're a bottle. <laughs> but you were talking about probes. Like that's definitely. I, we talk about this all the time. That's like the number one. If you're, if you're whoever's cooking in your family, if they don't have a good probe, that's like number one. And you got Thermo Pro. Get yourself the the uh, the cordless one. The spike. Is that what's called spike? Uh, there was there are temp spike. I think temp is what spike. It's called. Those are freaking cool, definitely. Uh, if they don't have a regular instant read, the uh, the Thermapin or the Thermapop, excellent choice. And I was thinking it'd be a good gift because a lot of people who do barbecue, they already have just a regular right. temp probe. Not many people have that cordless one. So. Yeah, super cool. Super cool. John? Uh, I got a list that's like seven pages long, and uh, I don't okay. want to read all yeah, this. Right, yeah. But uh, I, I will name... Top three. A couple. Okay. Uh, well, just three? Okay, uh, okay. I'll, I'll try to name some that we don't talk about all the time because we already talk about all the time the Oklahoma Joes. Uh, we talk about getting yourself signed up to the MBBQA. You notice how I'm naming them without naming I, I, them? I know exactly. What uh, you're doing. Yeah. Okay, the Cambro boxes. All these things we talk about all the time. Uh, one that we tried recently, uh, the meat swaddle, which I don't know if you guys saw. We had a we did a video on that. 
It's super cool. It's just for resting your meat, and I think it'd be great for uh, like if you're at a competition and you need to take your meat in and turn it in or whatever you want to keep it warm in the box. It looks like a pillowcase, honestly, but uh, it, it keeps your your meat warm. It's a it's a meat swallow. I think Matt had even created a jingle for it. I don't know if he's going to sing that or not, uh, but. No, he's not. Okay. Uh, grill grates. That was another one. I'll try to remember the uh, jingle. <laughs> and if you do want grill grates, they make those for damn near every grill, right? At this yeah. point, like all the grills, you can get a grill grate for them. Uh, our giveaway it should be posted already when this episode drops. So there's going to be grill grates in that. There's going to be a lot of cool shit in that. Check that out too. But yeah, this list goes on for days and days. And there will be a, a link to our website in the description of this episode where you can go right over there and check out the whole list and then send it to whoever's shopping for you. Hey, here's hoping I win the giveaway. You can't win. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Not for my main account, I can't. Alex, you got anything to add to this list? <clears throat> well, I was going with the Cambro, but uh, you took that away from me. Wow. Hey, are you talking about the Cambro, the box? Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> I think it's a good time to pay some sponsors. Yeah. Let's, pay uh, some sponsors. Let them pay us. <laughs> That's not how sponsorship That's work. why we're not making any damn money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's go pay some bills and uh, let's hear from one of our friends in the Odd Pods Media Network. By Oklahoma Joe's new Rider Deluxe Pellet Grills. Since the company's humble beginnings in 1987, Oklahoma Joe has helped those who appreciate the process and the craft of smoking. What began with Joe Davidson, a member of the Barbecue Hall of Fame, and a dozen hand-built smokers at the Oklahoma State Fair over 30 years ago, has since forged an Oklahoma Joe's brand that builds some of the most sought-after smokers. Oklahoma Joe has a proud history of creating uncompromising smokers and grills with carefully crafted design. And the newest generation of the popular Ryder Series pellet grills carries on this tradition. The new features in the Oklahoma Joe's Ryder Deluxe pellet grills include a pit control 2.0 system that delivers the category's first dual sensor temperature control. Fire focus dual sensor feedback optimizes temperature control based on selected cooking styles, low and slow smoking, or high heat grilling. A power feed system that boasts the high torque auger motor that powers through pellets for incredible power and performance. The new Rider Deluxe series builds on several popular features, including smoke and sear modes, which features an impressive temperature range that runs from 200 degrees Fahrenheit to a searing hot 650 degrees Fahrenheit, and a 20 pound quick draw hopper that allows unused pellets to be drained in seconds for simple storage, removal, and swapping of pellet flavors. Guys, if you want to find out more information about the new Rider Deluxe Series pellet grills from Oklahoma Joe, check out the Oklahoma Joe's website, and the link is in our description in the bio, and that's oklahomajoes.com. Hey, you there. We've got a question for you. Are you tired of clickbait stories and the loudest voices driving discussions in culture and entertainment? If so, I'm Dylan. I'm Kendall. And I'm Corey. And we host the podcast From the Middle. We're middle-class guys living in the middle of America, in the middle chapters of our lives with points of view somewhere in the middle. We take a more reasonable and centrist approach in our discussions covering genres like comedy, culture, entertainment, and interviews with really interesting folks like business owners, comic creators, doctors, news anchors, New York Times best-selling illustrators, professional stand-up comics, and more. We really value a relaxed and conversational podcast. One that we hope is so fun and laid back, you'll forget you're not actually hanging out with us. So search at From the Mid Pod, just like it sounds, or check us out everywhere you can find podcasts. Boom. Oh, that's like a like a bull bull in a china shop, man. It's like uh <laughs> like all the background noises. Oh, was there a lot of noise? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't single anybody out. I was like, man, it's like everything's like. <laughs> okay, well, it wasn't me. I didn't move. I muted my Fair mic point. like a professional. So did I. <clears throat> okay, well, maybe it was me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, John. Let's drink to that. Uh, let's slide into the grab and a brisket. Beer review. A late on the cue there, James. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is from. Uh, Elder Sun Brewing Company. Oh, James got a picture. 
Oh, somebody's beating the hell out of their mic. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. That uh, was me. My bad. And uh, my, my my wife is friends with uh, the, the owners. I went in there the other day and um, got a few crowlers. This is one that I guess they do every year. This is Yippee Ki Yay uh, Christmas Ale, five point eight percent. And I don't know. I'm excited to try it. They were, I tried it there and I I really liked it. And they're like, dude, this is the one you guys need to try on the show. Uh, if this goes well, maybe we can find ourselves podcasting at their bar, drinking a lot more of these. Well, it's going well for me so far because I really like this beer. Perfect. <laughs> Unlike a lot, a, a lot of these Christmas sales, they'll be like very like syrupy. Like I don't know, you know what I'm talking about? Like I love St. Arnold's. Not a big fan of their Christmas beer. Yeah. Carbach, Not a big fan of their Christmas beer. This is like more like an amber that just has like a little bit of that Christmas, yeah, a little Christmas bit flavor of spice to it. Though, right? I, I like it that way. Yeah. But when I had it at the place, they were they were serving them with, uh, and I think I just had like a little tester thing. They were serving it. Uh, it had a big fat head on it, right? And then they were sprinkling. I can't remember if it was like cinnamon or nutmeg, nutmeg. or something on top. That was like their their finisher, and they told me to do that, but I forgot to. Well, let me do go get that. my nutmeg. He's gonna go grab his nutmeg. <laughs> oh, I thought he was shitting. He's really gonna go grab some nutmeg. All right. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyways. Yeah. What do you think, James? Well, first of all, I'll go in and lead off with. Um. Sorry. Give me one second. Look at my notes here. Uh, so it, it's a good beer. The Yippee Kaye uh, MFR. Um, that is from. Why am I drawing a blank? What movie is that from? Die Hard. Die Hard. Yeah, uh, and definitely not a Christmas movie. So I'm just going to put it out there. So I don't know what your thoughts are on if, if Die Hard is a Christmas movie hey, or not. I'm on the same team as you. I think Matt would argue that, but Matt's went to dig for nutmeg. So Alex, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, do you think this is a Christmas movie? Oh, absolutely. Christmas movie. No, just because it happens in the Christmas season doesn't make sense. That happens. Yeah, it's not how it works. It's a Christmas yeah, movie. Yeah, if there's like a, a Santa Claus in it, then it's automatically a Christmas movie. No, it's not how it works. That is how it works. So what if it's a movie that happens over the course of like ten years? So it goes through like Christmas and Easter and and a bunch of other holidays. Is it all the holidays movie? I mean, how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. That's how it works for the Nightmare <clears throat> Before Christmas. It's a Halloween and a Christmas movie. You can watch okay. it both holidays. Oh, right. There you go. Boom. Already. Boom. Okay. Yeah, y'all be wrong. That's fine. Uh, do you want to give this thing uh, a go, score go. to talk about it or what? Yeah, going back, uh, I'll, I'll go with the score first. Um, I love the uh, I love the the logo. I love the what's this five point eight percent alcohol by volume? Yeah, easy drinker. Easy drinker. So, yeah, I, I mean this is a pretty good pretty good beer. It's a pretty good beer. I'm not a huge fan of Christmas ales. Uh, I'll be honest. There, there's nothing there that it's a little bit of a bitter back end note, um, but there's nothing there that I don't hate. Uh, I'm going to go with a solid 7.0. You say there's nothing there that you don't hate or nothing there that you right. hate? I don't. <laughs> There's nothing there that he don't hate. Okay, okay. what is there to understand really... about that, John? <laughs> no, there's a double <laughs> negative. I'm just making sure we're on the same page here. Uh, is that what we're doing? We're, we're uh, cracking down on uh, vocabulary. Uh, make oh, sure the grammar is good. It says the guy with the goatee and a backwards hat. I'll go <laughs> ahead and go no. next. Uh, I'm going to give this. I, I think I like this one a little bit more than James. I'm giving it an 8.8. I'm also not a big fan of Christmas sales, but I really appreciate how this one's not, like I said, super syrupy or anything. It's not like it doesn't, some of those have like that weird like pine flavor, like a little too much of that to them. Right. I'm talking yeah, about. yeah. It's, it's just That's this like is a, a nice, cone. easy drinking, delicious beer, and it's probably my favorite Christmas beer at this point. Hmm. Nice. All right, I, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go eight five. Yeah. Good score. It tastes like kind of like a the fluffy nuts, but like a light version of it. I can see that. Yeah, it doesn't have a bite. It's like fluffy nuts light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. It, it's good. I like it. Eight five, all day. Uh, God, I don't know. I don't. I don't. There's nothing about this beer I really dislike. So I'm gonna go. Uh, <laughs> I, nothing that I don't dislike. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm with Matt. I'm gonna say eight point eight. This is a good beer. I like this beer a lot. I wish I would have got two of these crawlers because 
since then I could drink one by myself. Wow. Yeah. The only thing I can ask for is maybe some cooler artwork on the can. I mean, I know these are crowlers and it just has a basic logo or whatever, but maybe if they start putting this out that you can get like little Hans Gruber, like falling off the uh, <laughs> Nakatomi towers, just backwards or whatever, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. you know, I, I mean, for all we know, the individual beers may have that on them. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. I'm not sure that they're, yeah. yeah I, think I, I want it, I want it just be an office chair with a sign on it that says, ho, ho, ho. And if you don't know what I'm talking about from Die Hard. Okay, sorry. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. okay. Right. All right. James, you, you get it. I do. Thank you. It. Okay. He's Thank saying he appreciate it. that. Alex gets I got it. it. Everybody gets it but you, John. I got it. I totally got it. It's a, it's a ho, ho, ho in a chair. <laughs> I get it. It's fine. <laughs> John's like, tell me later after. I'm, like, okay. <laughs> I'm cutting all this out. Forget it. <laughs> right. No beer review this month or this uh, week. Okay. And this has been the Grab the Brisket Beer Review. All right. Thanks. That was, that was very good, guys. Wow, look how fast that goes when Jan's not here. <laughs> wait, wait. wait. Just one, more second, one more second. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Don't uh, leave him alone. No, I miss Jan. Okay. Uh, he'll be here next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he'll be here next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the airtime, boys. <laughs> Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, no. Are we, we got some barbecue okay. fails or? Love you, Chan. Uh, that would be your dog scratching me, my mic. <laughs> oh, sorry. Boy, boy. Good boy. Boomer. Dog scratching himself. Good boy, Boomer. Hmm. Okay. All right. So yeah. we have a barbecue winner fail. Or? We do. We do. Y'all want to hear it? I want to hear it. All right. Let's go. Yeah, let's hear it. Hey, this is uh, Keith Fixing with Teachers Barbecue. Um, I'm calling in about my brisket win I shared with you guys uh, this past um, was it Monday. Uh, so the brisket itself was a USDA Prime 12-pound brisket uh, cooked on my Lang 84 Kitchen Deluxe. So I put it on around 9.45 p.m. on Black Friday. Lang was sitting around 225 degrees, which is what I really like. And I let it sit in that smoke bath for a good two, two and a half hours to try to let that bark build and set and get a really good color. Um, then after that two and a half hour mark, I took a spray bottle with beef consomme and water mixture and sprayed about every hour just to help it kind of keep it moist. And then I basically wrapped on color um, and pretty much feel of it. So when I first put it on, it was fat cap down. And then when I wrapped it, I made sure to put it back fat cap up. Um, my goal was to get that fat to kind of render down throughout the brisket as it's finishing the cook. Um, I Then I wrapped it, I would say, around 4.30 on Saturday morning. Um, and then I let it go. I let it ride until uh, the probe in the flat was butter smooth with zero resistance. Um, and then I let it rest. And our uh, warmer box that the Lang Deluxe has over the fire box, the warmer was sitting at about 150 degrees. Um, and then I just let it sit there for about a good two hours as it rests. Um, and then when we got prepared for our service for our, for our patrons that day, we went ahead and started slicing it. And those are the videos that I shared with you. Had a really good jiggle to it, I thought. Um, and then when I went to go pick it up off the smoker when it was done, uh, pretty much folded uh, right in my hands. So I knew it was probably going to be a pretty good one. Um, but thank you so much uh, for letting me call in, and uh, thanks so much for the kind words about it. And hope to see you guys soon. And thanks so much for all you do. Bye. All right, winner, winner. Yeah. Uh, and I do have those little video clips. I'm going to share real quick. So if you were just listening, well, it's brief. So it sucks to be you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look at that jiggle. Yeah, that's I saw the jiggle. that's pretty solid brisket. Yeah, that's a quick uh, a quick video, but you did see a jiggle, which I mean, that's what you want to see in any video, really, is some jiggle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Hold on, I got one more that just shows like uh, it shows a little sliced. Hell of a smoke ring. Oh wow, yeah. Uh, he did a good job. So I was really confused. I don't know if I missed something in the beginning, but I was like, "Who's cooking a brisket the day after Thanksgiving? You did not have enough leftovers, but." He was doing it for. He has event. a he has a food truck. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so get it. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is the same guy I talked to before. He was he learned on a like a pellet smoker, or whatever, whatever. And then he got a food truck and he got this Lang smoker and he's just been killing he's it. Just been killing it, just cranking nice. him out. So uh, if you couldn't understand, his name is Keith Dixon, and he is with uh, Teaches Barbecue. If you want to check him out, he's on the social media, his Instagram. It's Teaches T E A C H S underscore BBQ. Uh, and he's he's doing his thing, so check him out. But he is going to win. What's he going to win, Matt? Sucker Buster, Sucker Buster. Everybody loves that Sucker Busters. 
Nice. Yeah. Oh man, you just took Jan's job just like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, he's we just, out. we just outsourced Jan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Keith. Hey, congratulations to Keith. Yeah. yeah. Recommend that chicks that smoke. All right. Next on the docket, John. Yeah, I was just looking for my docket, but my beer was sitting on it. So, nope. This is the part where we give final thoughts. What do you got, Alex? Final thoughts. I, I don't know. I was trying to catch up on the the docket over here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we keep calling it a docket. I don't know. That's... I like it. It sounds great. I feel like we need a podium. Yeah. And a <laughs> we, we need a docket. <laughs> John, you should be standing at a docket while we're recording. I don't know what a docket you is. Can, but you can have a little hammer and you can like... I've got a gavel and a yeah, judge's rope. That was my dad's. A yeah. docket? Isn't that where you park a boat? No. Wait, that... <laughs> Just... <laughs> a docket was your itinerary oh, for like when you're a okay. judge. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Off the rails. Doc. <laughs> Final thoughts. Uh, Thanksgiving went great. Ready for Christmas presents. Hope my dad enjoys the probe. 100%. We talked yeah. about brisket. We talked about how to pick out a brisket. If you missed it last week, we talked about brisket, but we talked about the history of brisket. So if you didn't check that one out, go check out episode 187. I feel like I really missed something there. Like I had an opportunity. It was episode 187, and I did not do any kind of like 187. Like I, You nothing. know, I think it's, we're Zero all better planning. off that you forgot. And didn't I, notice I, that. I totally yeah. forgot about right. it. I was like, oh, I should have done something cool. But I'm not. Were you do, was that Bill Clinton? Were you doing Bill Clinton impersonation? Like, <laughs> was I? They sound like him. Yeah, it's like one eight seven. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, okay, All right. All right. then. Yeah. Final thoughts. Let's wrap yeah. this the hell up. <laughs> yeah. Final thoughts. Hey, I love the intros that we're getting from some of these people. John, you're doing a kick-ass job. I just uh, I saw the one with Rich O'Toole giving us a shout out to. On the intros to our videos, so that is pretty badass. That's what we do. Oh, he's going to be in yeah. Conroe soon. Did you see that? Oh, he's been in Houston a bunch. We yeah. need to go see him. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that, that's definitely on the on the docket uh, for sure. I'm going to say everybody slide over to grabmethebrisket dot com. That has uh, all the links that you guys need to find out what we're up to. Uh, I know we got a lot of things planned coming up here in the near future. I know we, we may have a, um, a listener jump on the show, um, be a special guest for us. Um, I'm sure there's probably going to be some competitions in our near future. Uh, what else am I missing here? Um, obviously, oh yeah, I, a question for you guys. And we can lead out with this, and all the listeners, you can chime in. You can ask us questions or, or uh, let us know your thoughts. What are you guys cooking for Thanksgiving? I mean, not Thanksgiving. That Thanksgiving's <laughs> over with. You got your fill of turkey and all that good stuff. John over there, I think he had everything. So Bro, we didn't um, even, we didn't even touch on that. I cooked so much stuff. Yeah, well, right. next all time. the things. I cooked all the things. So what what are you, what are your plans for Christmas? What what do you guys do? Do you have a tradition for Christmas Day or Christmas Eve that you prepare a meal for? I do. It's a secret Croatian family sauerkraut and sausage recipe. Every every okay. every Christmas we I make this with my dad, so that's my plan. That I don't. I'm probably not going to be barbecuing anything. And that if you don't like good. sauerkraut, right. you'd probably like it because we wash the sauerkraut in the sink until all that pickly souriness is out of it, and it just end up with the cabbage. What's the point of that? Like that's the good part because you had flavors. Okay. I, I mean, I try it. I trust anything that your dad cooks. Wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have to be Croatian to eat it or try it? Uh, no, but when you eat it, you will have a little Croatian in you for a moment. Okay. You get crazy. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pass. <laughs> I don't need any Croatian in me. No. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, what about you guys? Uh, uh, usually for me, we do we either Christmas or Thanksgiving. One of them will cook a huge fucking feast like we just did for Thanksgiving, and then the other one, honestly, we'll we'll go out to eat or something. Like we don't have family in town here, so usually one of them's at home cooking a big meal. The other one we go out to eat. So I don't know what our plan is, but more than likely we will be going somewhere. I thought so, we were kind of yeah. like your family, but okay. We kind of are, but no, uh, yeah, whatever. I didn't get an invite, so I, I guess I don't know how to how to how to play that. So. I'm, prob really I'm probably going to smoke a brisket for Christmas. Mm? Well, for Leslie's there family. It, It'll, it won't be on Christmas Day. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, those poor souls. Hey. 
That's not very nice. All right. Enjoy your sauerkraut. Well, <laughs> I'll go ahead and say, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure talking barbecue with you guys. I really enjoyed it. Peace. Thanks, everybody. We've been great. Dang it, Bobby. Just grab the brisket. We'd like to give a special thanks to Suckle Buster's Barbecue Rubs and Sauces, Bonner's Fiesta Spices, Cooley Nation Custom Koozies, Cambro Manufacturing, Yeti Coolers, the Smoke Sheep Barbecue Newsletter, and Dow Strong Knives. We definitely appreciate your support.